Andy Barrows used to own a home in the nation's most expensive city. But after the stress of seeing his mortgage repayments shoot up, he decided to sell his house and rent instead. It's a massive relief, literally from four hours sleep a night, wringing my hands and worrying about the future and about the present to waking up refreshed, uninterrupted, it's, uh, it's a big change. Just as he and his wife stopped working full time, the Reserve Bank started lifting interest rates. The risk went up and the uncertainty went up. We were paying 30% more probably for, for our mortgage. Andy is one of many Australians who decided to sell their homes in the past three years. The number of properties changing hands within this period has surged to its highest level in at least a decade. And the number of borrowers who are at least 30 or 90 days behind on their repayments is ticking up. We have about three in a thousand customers in hardships. We know from our own data that the people who have home loans actually tend to, to be better off. So I think um, in some ways people talk about a two-speed economy. Um, definitely we see some arrears, but really that's not quite reflecting the true amount of financial stress in the community. That's because people tend to struggle with other bills before they miss their mortgage repayments. People are falling behind on council rates, utility bills like their electricity, gas and water bills telephone bills, other debts like credit cards and personal loans, but what they don't realise is that falling behind on your other debts can also put your property at risk of repossession. Home loans specialist Richard Witten has done some research into how Australians are coping with higher mortgage repayments. His team at the comparison website Finder surveyed more than 1,000 people and about one in five have switched to making interest-only repayments in the past couple of years. It makes your repayments lower in the short term, but in the long term it does increase your interest costs uh, quite a lot. I think that was certainly the case in Australia. Erin Kitson from the credit ratings agency S&P has identified parts of Melbourne, particularly in the northwest and northeast, as well as southwest Sydney and Parramatta as problem areas with some of the highest levels of mortgage stress. That probably reflects uh, greater household leverage and differential between income versus property prices given the expensive price tag in these cities. Certainly I think we will see further increases in mortgage arrears, but also what happens with unemployment is probably even more important. We forecast it to increase modestly and that will have a, a downstream impact on mortgage arrears. Most borrowers on fixed rate loans have already transitioned to much higher variable rates. Many of them have been able to escape the worst of the mortgage cliff by selling their homes before they fall too far behind on their repayments. So that's why mortgage defaults have been quite low. A booming property market has also helped people, like Andy, get out of their home loans without too much trouble. Back problems that I've had for years, pains that have been, you know, shooting up and down my legs, rather magically solved themselves quite quickly after we sold that house, so uh, it was a big relief. But he sometimes dreams of climbing back on the property ladder, if it becomes more affordable. 